obrazovanju i uspolje. Dobrodošli na znanosti sa jesenata Univerze Kuljane. Ob tej priložnosti še posebej pozdravljam visoko. Nekdanjega predsednika Republike Slovenije, Milana Kučana. Ministra za izobraževanje znanosti škol, prof. dr. Jeneja Pikara. Ministrico za pravosodje, Andrej Okatič. Ministra za slovenca v zemljstvo in po svetu, Petra Česnika. Vele poslanico Republike Češke v Republike Sloveniji, Vero Zemano. Poč upana, mes naučne Ljubljana, Aleša Čevina. Direktorja Agencije za raziskovano dejavnost Republike Slovenije, dr. Jožka Vrkeša. Direktorja Slovenske znanstvene fundacije, prof. dr. Edvarda Kovara. Direktorja inštituta Joža Štefan, prof. dr. Jadrana Lenačiča. Rektorja Univerze v Trsku, prof. dr. Moricija Krmenjo. Rektorja Univerze v Zenici, prof. dr. Damirja Kukiča. Rektorja Univerze v Mariboru, prof. dr. Zdravka Kačiča. Rektorja Univerze v Nove Gorici, prof. dr. Danila Zabartenka. Ravnateljico Narodne univerzitetne knjižnice, Martino Rozman, Salobir in druge ogledne poste. Včasno mi je, da skupaj z nami preznujete teden univerze, v katerem se vsako leto spominjamo začetko njenega predovanja. Danes preznujemo že 99 let, kar pa tudi pomeni, da bomo v letu 2019 preznovali stoletnico v obstoju. Na uspehe univerze v Ljubljani smo izjemno ponosni, zato z največjim spoštovanjem včasne nazive, plakete in priznanja podeljujemo tistim spoč, v katerih je univerze v Ljubljani boljša univerza. Prosim rektorja Univerze v Ljubljani, prof. dr. Igorja Papiča za obrednje besede. Spoštovani, na včerajšnji dan pred 99 leti je prav tem prostoru potekalo prvo predavanje v slovenskem jeziku na novo stanovljenje Univerze v Ljubljani. Ta čas je pripadla takrat letih 20 letnemu slovenstvu dr. Francektora Mošku. Letošnji teden univerze so to še potekajo v smislju stoletnico, ki jo bomo obeležili prihodnje leto. Zdravili bomo spominjen pred petih sto let in največ univerze v Sloveniji postremili v še sodlejšo prihodnost, to se prepriča. Naša vizija je postati še bolj prepoznavna, mednarodno odprta in odlična raziskovana univerza, ki ustvarjalno prispeva v kakovosti življenja. To vizijo lahko dosežemo na sodelovanju z notrem univerze v našem okolju, tako domačim kot metalovim. A vse milje odvisno od nas sami, zaraz in razvoj potrebujemo stimulativno okolje. Potrebujo ga tudi druge izobraževalne, raziskovalne inštitucije, gospodarstvo, kultura. Žal sta visoko šolsko in raziskovalna dejavnost še vedno finančno odhranjena. V zadnjih nekaj letih se sredstva sicer povečujejo, To, da v teh hitrosti bomo leta 2021 prišli k jah, kjer smo bili leta 2011. Kljub finančnih podhranjenosti pa smo ponosni, da univerze v Ljubljani še naprej ostajamo v najboljšim univerzami na svetu, kar izkazuje o priznane mednarodne lestnice. Naši znanstveniki se uvršča v sam svetovni vrh in prihodne jih moramo še bolj motivirati, da bodo objavljali v glednih mednarodnih revijah. Lahko se pohvalimo z izjemno uspešnim pridobivanjem projektov Evropskega raziskovalnega sveta, kjer glede na velikost države velelimo izjemne dosežke. Smo edina slovenska univerza s pridobljenimi ERC projekti. Že peti projekt smo pridobili letos po leti. Prav tako smo v okviru razpisa Evropskega raziskovalnega prostora RHR pridobili projekt COMPIT za ustanovitev Centra za mikroprocesorsko inženirstvo in tehnologijo. Pridobljeni projekt je prvi in edini dovrstni slovenski projekt v sklopu programa Obzorje 2020. Izpostavljam tudi pomembne korake univerze v Ljubljani na področju internacionalizacije. Letošnjem letu smo se vključili mednarodni konzorci univerz, ki bo sodeloval pri prvem pilotnem razpisu European Universities. Univerza v Ljubljani je novembra letos postala tudi polnopravna članica Svetovne zveze univerz Venice International University. Rad bi pohvalil strokovne sodelovce univerze, ki ste bilo za učinkovito administrativno in finančno podporo pri izvajanju vseh naših procesov in projektov. 
Zelo ponosni smo na naši študente, ki prav tako žanijo vzpike v narodnem prostoru. Naj mi je bilo nekaj vzpikov v različnih področjih. Študent naše razdobno-tehničke fakultete je postal svetovni prvak v virtualnih delavi jeta na tekovanju Steel Challenge. Ekipa pravne fakultete je na najstem svetovno tekovanju Frankfurt Investment Arbitration Mood Court svojila skupno drugo mesto na svetu. Prijela je še dodatno nagrado za prvo mesto med ekipami iz hodne evropske skupine. Posebno najprestihnejšo nagrado celotnega tekovanja je prav tako je prejel član ekipe, ki je bil izmed vseh tekovalcev izbran za najboljšega odletnika tekovanja. Ko je Evropska vesolska agencija grafičnim obvikovalcem in umetnikom ponudila jedinstveno priložnost, da predstavijo svoj delo na raketi, ki bo zemlj spogorbi preizdravila satelit Kiops, se je prijavil tudi naš študent z fakultete za arhitekturo in na različajo podpavo. Podobnih uspehov je še mnogo več, zato v tednu diverze največji doseljem z rekam priznanjem vsem, ki gre do pri svojem delu in študiju še korak dlje, ki želijo in znorejo več, zase za univerzo, za družbo. Iskrene čestitke in zahvala vsem današnjih prijednikov občasnih nazivov, raketi in priznanj. Hvala, ker vtarivajte v gled univerzo Ljubljani, ponosni smo na vas.
vidio prvega častnega naziva, to je naziv Častni doktor Univerze v Ljubljani. Naziv Častni doktor podeljujemo za izimne dosiške na področju znanosti in umetnosti. Danes bomo podelili tri take nazive. Prosim, rektorja Univerze za svečano podelitev. Spoštovani zbor, na podlagi in prevrat obrbete za matematiko in fiziko Univerze v Ljubljani za Častnega doktorja poglašamo profesorja Antna Koldejna. Za izjemno doprinost razvoju znanosti v svetu na področju kvantnih polov in tekoči in magnetnih velik, ter za pomembno znanstveno in pedagoško sodelovanje z Univerzo v Ljubljani. Prosim za obrazovitev. Danken Koldejn je teoretični fizik, krojen v Veliki Britaniji, oči v Škotu in materi poroški iz Slovenki. Poleg sorobstvenih vezi ga Slovenijo povezuje tudi strokovno delovanje, saj nas je že leta 2000 v bistvu podvabljeni predavatelj na konferenciji, ki so jo naprej organizirali sobirovci Fakultete za matematiko in fiziko, Univerzo Ljubljan in Inštituta Joža Štepan. V letošnjem letu je imel med daljšim obiskom Ljubljane dve dobro obiskanje predavanje za študente fizike in preziskovalce. Profesor Koldejn je leta 1978 doktoriral iz fizike na univerzi v Cambridgeu in do leta 1981 delal na inštitutu Le Longelon v Grenoblu v Franciji. Na to se je presilil v Združene države Amerike, kjer je leta 1990 postavil profesor fizike na univerzi v Princetonu. Pionirske raziskade profesorja Koldejna so povezane s kvantnimi lasnostmi snovi pri nizkih temperaturah. Ti sistemi so tedaj veljali za dobro raziskanje, saj se je zdelo, da ni več prostora za dopolnitve njihovega razumevanja. Profesor Koldejn pa je leta 1983 odkril teoretično nepričakovanje topološke lasnosti magnetnih velik in leta 1988 kot prvi podal tudi teoretični model tako imenovanega topološkega materijala. Tako je postavil temelje za eno trenutno najživatnejših področjev raziskav v fiziki kondenzirane snovi, zlasti po odkritju konkretnih snovi topoloških izolatorja. Vizionarsko delo profesorja Koldejna je bilo leto 2016 nagrajeno z nobilno nagrado, ki jo je skupaj z Davidom Forosom in Johnom Kustelicom prejel za teoretično odkritje topoloških faznih prehodov in topoloških faz snovi. Rektor, prosim za podelitev naziva. K vemu vrem, spekta tisti me domine Dante Koldej, doktore honoris causa Univerzitati Slavacencis TDK. Dear Rector Papic, members of the Senate and distinguished guests, as a person of 50% Slovene ancestry, who has always self-identified as half Slovene and half Scottish, I am indeed honored to receive this recognition from the leading University of Slovenia. I must say, hvala lepa, but also, kvosti mo kvosti te mi, for not speaking more Slovene. <laughs> My Slovenian origins are complex, originating on both sides of the northern border of Slovenia, a border now happily made almost irrelevant by shared membership of the European Union. As a physicist, I'm proud to share Corinthian Slovene roots with the great 19th century physicist Joseph Stefan, commemorated in the name of Slovenia's leading physics institute. My mother was unusual in being the first in her family and probably the first Corinthian Slovene girl from her small town to go to university. My grandmother sent her to the Catholic Ursuline Gymnasium High School in Selevet, or Charlton Clydenford, to avoid perceived discrimination in the local state schools in the 1930s. And my mother said that my grandfather agreed to this because he was unaware that my grandmother was actually paying school fees for her. As a half Scot, 
I'm of course aware of the reputation we have for being careful with our money, but I was interested to be recently told that Slovenians might have a similar reputation. <laughs> <laughs> One particular teacher at my mother's school noticed her abilities and mentored her and prepared her for the Matura exam and the university admission to study medicine. He attended Graz and Vienna universities as a foreign student because despite having been born to a local mother in 1919 in the bilingual part of Karoshka that 10 months later became part of Austria and Carinthia, she and the whole family were assigned SHS and then Yugoslav uh, citizenship based on my grandfather's birthplace near Big Rio, just south of the border. The Second World War years were of course dramatic for all Slovenes and events in Carinthia at the end of the war led to the unlikely union of a Scot who was a British Army medical officer and a Carinthian Slovene medical student who was working with wounded partisans. During my childhood growing up in London, I heard many stories about this period, which reinforced appreciation of my part Slovenian heritage. But I was also influenced by my parents and especially my mother's interest for science that her education had aroused in her. One thing that emerges from my mother's story is the importance of the special teacher who encouraged her and mentored her at her school. I too benefited from encountering an inspiring mentor, Philip W. Anderson at Cambridge University, who was a brilliant but unconventional thinker who received his own Nobel Prize in the year that I finished my PhD thesis. He taught me by example how to think about problems in physics by simplifying a problem to represent it by a cartoon-like toy model that still hopefully retain the essence of physics being investigated. Nobel Prizes, almost by definition, usually result from unexpected discoveries that no one had expected to make. And this means that there's a huge component of luck involved in the choice of a research topic. From this point of view, I often tell student audiences that anyone working in scientific research has the potential to make a Nobel-worthy unexpected discovery. They don't need to be Einstein-like geniuses. But to recognize, unearth, and expose something that often first shows up unexpectedly in what's called curiosity-based research requires preparation to exploit the opportunity that's come as a result of making a lucky choice of topic to investigate. Often it may be left unexploited until someone else later, yet a later again notices it and stops again to look in more detail. So one of my own early successes that was cited by the Nobel Committee came about when I realized that a new way of thinking about toy models of electrons moving along conducting polymer chains could be applied to magnetic systems. And the first application confirmed that this was, a valid, this was valid and provided a satisfactory explanation of known results from a new perspective. So the application to a related problem that conventional wisdom in the field thought was understood showed in fact that the widely held opinion about it was just completely wrong. This was totally unexpected and shocked me, but seemed an ex uh, inescapable conclusion from my new viewpoint. My conclusions were initially strongly rejected by senior people in the field, and the controversy, but the controversy over what was labeled as my conjecture got many people interested in the question and eventually experiments ruled in my favor. <coughs> this controversy certainly benefited my career. There are probably still many, uh, uh, still many amazing things that we have falsely convinced ourselves that we understand, waiting for someone to take a look at them from a new perspective that will show us that our beliefs are quite mistaken. <coughs> While I originally thought that I just found an obscure curiosity in a very specialized area, it turned out that what I had found was a simplest example of a new type of quantum state of matter now called topological quantum matter that in recent years has given rise to dreams of quantum computers. It was a combination of luck and the preparation for thinking differently that I received from my mentor that allowed such an unexpected success. Such preparation of students is not just a matter of skills acquired in advanced courses, but seems to be best nurtured in centers of excellence where they can absorb new and fruitful ways of thinking from inspiring mentors. The key to building such centers is finding and retaining key people who can build the scientific culture of the institute, institution and excite young students about research. For a small country, it's natural and desirable that young students uh, aspire to go to major international centers of excellence to develop as scientists and build an international profile. 
But the key to fostering a strong local scientific culture is to attract a few of these exceptional expatriates to come back home and support them in building their own group around themselves with a program that does not jump between highs and lows of scientific funding as science ministers and governments come and go. To have at least one and hopefully a few more centers of truly world-class research is a desirable goal for small countries. In some sense, it does not really matter what the research topic is, the key is to fund some exceptional people who will create something. If the science budget is spread out so everyone gets a, a fair but small share, it will not lead to those centers of excellence that could be transformative in the scientific life of a country. Slovenia is fortunate compared to many other small countries by being close to major European research centers that are vital for collaborations. And I strongly hope that even if Brexit is indeed happening, uh, collaborations with UK centers of excellence will continue. The test of whether centers of excellence have truly been created will be when foreign postdoctoral researchers and even graduate students can be attracted to them. In the latter case, I know that the teaching language laws here pose a difficulty, but also I point out that even in France, now there are advanced graduate classes given in English. Sacre bleu. Let me end by expressing the hope that in some area of science in the future, someone who was mentored by an exceptional scientist at the University of Ljubljana or elsewhere in Slovenia will go on to discover something unexpected that has enough impact to be judged worthy of a Nobel Prize. But in fact, for the scientist herself or himself, the real prize is the satisfaction of finding something that others can build on in amazing ways. It's the non-scientists who really cannot understand what the scientists have done who make that incredible fuss over Nobel Prizes and the competition for them between universities and countries. Uh, Ljubljani, 
Vsi me domine Aron Ure, doktore Honori Skauza, Univerzitati Slavacekci, Sike Deklara. Io ho fatto il diploma Maxima Cum Gaudia, grazie a Stavo Università La Vacenzi, Proctor, Grado, Dottore Sponoris Causa. From here I received from Latin to English, dear Professor Patrich, uh, dear deans of the faculties, uh, faculty members, and all others assembled here. It is with very great pleasure that I accept this honor bestowed upon me by the University of Ljubljana. I first learned about your city more than half a century ago when as a teenager I read a biography of Gustav Mahler. I then found out that one of his first appointments as a conductor was in the place of Leibach. It was only many years later, it happened in 1986, when I first, first visited Ljubljana for a scientific conference, that I discovered that Leibach and Ljubljana are simply one and the same. And the new statue of Gustav Mahler, erected a few years ago, not far from the place we are assembled here, shows that your city has not forgotten the great uh, composer and uh, conductor. My involvement in the activities of the University of Ljubljana started when in September 2000 I first met Professor Nina Gunther Zimmermann during a conference in Germany. This was the beginning of a long collaboration with Professor Gunther Zimmermann and also with Professor Anna Pleminitas from the medical faculty uh, on the study of the biology of salt-loving microorganisms. Our joint work in the past 18 years has led to the publication of two books. One of these is a bilingual Slovenian-English volume that is that, uh, intended for the general public. And in addition, we wrote a large number of joint research papers, uh, reviews, and we also joined, uh, jointly organized a major scientific conference held in this city in 2004. So, I am deeply grateful that the Senate of the Univers Universitas Lavacensis has decided to grant the doctor, uh, of honor, Dr. Honoris Causa degree to me. Uh, and thanks to these collaborations that were not only very fruitful scientifically, but also extremely pleasant uh, as well. So, I am looking forward to further collaborations with my colleagues in Ljubljana also in the years to come. Thank you. Senator. 
Njegovo znanstveno sodelovanje s profesorjem Damjanom i Klavčičem z Fakultete za elektrotehniko univerzu v Ljubljani je do sedaj obrodilo več kot 30 znanstvenih šlankov v vso avtorstvu, pet mednarodnih patentov in dva doktorata v vso mentorstvu po pogodbi med univerzu v Ljubljani in univerzu Paris 11. Sodelovanje je potekalo v okviru francusko-slovenskega sodelovanja Proteus, PIX in Združenega Evropskega laboratorija CNRS, najvišje oblike formalnega sodelovanja Francuskega nacionalnega centra za znanstveno raziskovanje s tujimi raziskovanjimi skupinami. Dr. Mir vsako leto, letos že 12. sodeluje pri izvedbi mednarodne šole Electroporation Based Technologies and Treatments, ki se jo je udeležilo že več kot 700 skušateljev in predavateljev iz 39 držav. Dr. Prosim za podelitev na zbrat. Ko je pogrem, spektatistime domine Luis Mir, doktora Honoris Causa, Univerzitati Slavacensis, Telegrafi. Spoštovani zbor, 
un appello a chi conosca e fa proteggere il livello di Ljubljana. Da Ciastrica, senatore, a Fulasha, ma tutti i professori e dottori Ayana Svenaria, da Zieme, mi spera che non darà un modello di mezzo di organi, in tre piccoli riscuoli in potenziale, o si esce con la nostra economia. Prossimo da Presidente. Ayana Svenaria è James D. Shockle, professore globale e politico di economia in Università Columbia UCDA. Pedagogico in riscuolo e delogato in Università Columbia in Pittsburgh, lui è direttore di istituto. Davidson in Mednarodnega centra International Policy Center Univerze v Michiganu. Svoje poslanstvo, ki ga vidi predvsem v kreditvi ekonomskega upravljanja in prenosu dobrih prax v manj razviti države, uspešno širi tek inštituta Center on Global Economic Governance, ki deluje v okviru Univerze Kolumbija in svojih aktivnostih v različnih odporih Svetovne banke, Evropske banke za obnovo in razvoj, Organizacije za gospodarsko sodelovanje in razvoj in številnih drugih institucij po svetu. Profesor Svenar s svojim širokim raziskovanjem opusom predstavlja vrhunskega znanstvenika spodboča ekonomske znanosti, ki pri svojem delu povdarja prenos teoretičnih in empiričnih dognaj po oblikovanje okrepov ekonomske politike. Njegovo sodelovanje z Univerzo Ljubljani je izjemno dragoceno in prispiva k repitvi raziskovanih potencijalov in osežkov na področju ekonomije, posebni povdarko na pravočevanju procesa prehoda, upravljanja pojeti in tvrga dela. Z Ekonomsko fakulteto Univerzo Ljubljani in profesorem Janezom Prašnikarjem raziskovanju sodeluje že vse od leta 1985. Kot gostojoči predavatelj pa svoje široko znanje predaje študentom na programu International Master in Business. Poleg odličnega mentorskega dela mladim raziskovalcem in učiteljem sodeluje tudi na izjemno odmjevni dohod, ki jih organizira fakulteta, kot na primer poslovna konferenca Kortoroš. In tako prosim za spodeljiti poziva. Kujemo vrem, spektatisime domine Jan Svena, senatorem Honori Stavza, Univerzitati Sabrtenih in Svih Teleklani.
univerzu Ljubljani zlate plakete podeljujemo posameznikom za izjemne zasluge pri razvijanju znanstvenega, pedagoškega ali umetniškega ustvarjanja ter zakrepitev ugleda univerzu Ljubljani. Počasno priznanje letos premijo. Profesor Andrej Grafenau z Akademije za glasbo Univerze v Ljubljani. Profesor dr. Peter Dolč z Biotehničke fakultete Univerze v Ljubljani.
Zahvaljujemo se vam, da ste danes današnji dan delili z nami z Univerzo Kuljkjani. Vsakič znova smo počaščeni, ko se odzovete našemu dobiru. Ob zaključku dogodka vas spritno vabim v sosednji prostor na neformalno druženje in vam želim vzgovo popne.